What's up, Creek peeps? Jeremy and Stephanie here, up a creek with the Adelmans, uh, bringing you our latest episode. Uh, and in this week's episode, we are, have reached a milestone, and we have a sponsor. Take a look right here. Angus Beers and Barbecue out of Cittadella, Italy. My buddy Nick, uh, who's traveled America and learned American barbecue, opened up an amazing American barbecue restaurant in Cittadella. If you're in Italy right now and the restrictions are lifted, get over there and get you some good brisket, ribs, chicken. It's all fantastic. Mm -hmm. We love it. Absolutely. It's so delicious. Go check them out. Also, just want to say thank you so much to all the friends and family that reached out after our video last week. Your encouragement and support just means the world to us, and it's really keeping us motivated and going through this journey. So thank you so much. Yeah, it really means a lot. So this week, uh, what we're really focused on is showing you what in went into the design of our home, right? I mean, like, you know, it's one thing to talk about how, to, you know, all the steps that go to build the house, but, like, how did you even get to that point? And uh, for us... It was a unique journey, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we shopped around for a lot of different uh, options. I mean, what are some of the things we looked at? Yeah, absolutely. So your home plans are a big deal. There's a couple different options out there. You can purchase um, plans online. There's a vast you know, array of websites out there that have a variety of already drawn plans. You can also, if you're working with a builder or a custom home designer, sometimes they have in-house plans that are already drawn that yeah. you can choose from, a selection of, you know, 20 to 30 houses that they have in their wheelhouse that they've either built before or already had the plans drawn. For us, we couldn't actually use any of those options because of this Airbnb apartment that we were trying to build. There was nothing that fit the mold existing that we found after hours and hours and hours of research that fit the you know, the intent that we were trying to do with our existing primary residence and then this Airbnb apartment. So what that meant for what for us is that we had to hire a building designer. And he was able to draw our plans from the ground up. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you even start, right? I mean, we looked at some, uh, at some things that were conceptual, things that we liked in existing plans. But what we really went with was good old-fashioned PowerPoint. I sat down at my computer and I, we drew a box, literally a, a rectangle, and we started filling it in with, uh, with space, rooms, living rooms, bedrooms, uh, the way we wanted it. Uh, and that's kind of how it all, it all happened. We took that to our, our home designer, uh, David Disparito, at uh, Home Site Inc. out of White Marsh, Virginia, right up the road here, uh, and, and really worked with him, and it was a real personal experience uh, designing the home, uh, and, you know, it was full of ups and downs. I mean, you know, you're, you're really working hard to get the home right. Uh, and in our case, um, because our property is very unique, uh, when the elevation of your property is very unique, you have to really pay special attention to the layout of the home and, and how it's going to fit on the ground. Um, because if you don't do that, you might run into issues uh, with uh, fill dirt, you might run into issues with um, different types of foundations and things like that. So Yeah, absolutely. And when you're building a custom home, the big uh, keyword is square footage. So literally, you know, even the house plans were priced per square foot. So for heated and un uh, unheated space. So every square foot that he drew for our property was how much, you know, was billed to us for how much he charges for the plans. And also obviously how much each square foot that you build is uh, tacked onto your budget. So with that in mind, we really paid attention to every single inch of this house and said, you know, do we need this space? Does it make sense for us? Are we going to utilize this in our daily lives? Um, if not, then we're not, we're not including it because it doesn't make sense to build that when you're building a custom home. You can really chop out those portions of the home that just don't make sense for you. Yeah, that's the beauty of the custom home, right? Design a home that's going to fit your needs now and in the future, um, and then you don't end up with space in the home that just doesn't make sense for you or your lifestyle. So right here, we've got really cool, very um, official house plans, which you can see take They're up huge. <laughs> all of our um, picnic table here. Man, and many pages. <laughs> can't even really open them up in the RV because they're so big and we don't have a space to hold them. So instead of trying to show you via this way, we're gonna jump on the computer here and show you our house plans. We're really proud of them. They're like a, a newborn baby in some way for us because we put so much time and effort. So we're excited to share them with y'all. Here's the exterior view of the home, also known as the front elevation. As you can tell, it's got a colonial style vibe here in Virginia that's still very popular, especially where we're at. 
and we are going to be using a mix of materials on the exterior just to give it some visual interest. We're going to be using vinyl siding. We are also uh, have a metal roof accent over here on the porch and maybe some eyebrows over the window metal accents. And then we're going to be using some uh, shingling as well up here um, in the peaks. The elevation was a little bit challenging to do because when we presented our layout to our building designer, it was basically a square box on the interior. And that in turn made a square box on the exterior. And let me show you kind of where we started out when designing the elevation. This is what we first were presented with. And while it was, it was fine, I just wanted a little bit more of uh, visual interest and curb appeal on the exterior of the home. So we had to really get creative on how to do that because we really didn't want to change the interior of the home. We really liked the designs and the layout and it, it worked for us. So in order to leave that the same, we had to get creative um, and really kind of look at some different options. We spent a couple of good weeks just thinking of different ways we could change it up a little bit. So what we ended up doing was right here in this space here, we pop that out. That is actually going to extend just a few feet out of the home to give it some dimension there. Um, this is actually the dining room on the bottom floor, and then up top is going to be one of the boys' rooms. And we added another uh, peak right here to give it a little bit more dimension. And then also the big change was that Jeremy actually thought of was that we took this whole entire second floor here, and instead of lining it up having the roof line line up top to bottom right here, we shifted it over slightly. So that gave this different drop in the roof line to give it some more visual interest and added a little uh, pop out window here that's gonna be in the boys bathroom. We have also this breezeway here that connects to the garage. And then we have our Airbnb short-term rental apartment on top of that. We went minimal with our front porch because really we don't anticipate spending a whole lot of time in the front of the house. We'll be spending most of the time in, in the back, enjoying the view. Speaking of the back, here is the rear elevation of the home. As you can see, the goal is, <laughs> budget allowing, that we are going to have a back porch on the home for our use. It's gonna be screened in and it's gonna have a double-sided fireplace on this wall right here that also goes into our living room. So we'll be able to use that from both inside and out. And on the back porch, we have two uh, large French doors that will hopefully let in a lot of light and capture the view out um, onto the creek. Here in the guest apartment, we've also included a back porch, screened in back porch for the guests to enjoy. They're also gonna have a unique view uh, looking at a different angle. Um, the line of sight, as you can see here at the bottom, we have designed it specifically angled to uh, give ourselves privacy and also our guests privacy. So when you're standing on the corner of this um, porch here, you'll, you won't be able to look in and see our porch. All right, so now we've seen the outside of the house. Let's take a look inside and, and see how our design uh, panned out when it was finished. So if you look here in the center of your screen, uh, you'll notice uh, the main house. This is the first floor. So Stephanie talked a little bit about the front porch as you come up. Uh, nice big wide stairs coming up into this covered porch. This is that metal roof over the top that you'll see right here. Uh, and then in through the front door. Now, something that's interesting here is our home designer is a is certified for designing for aging in place. So on this first floor, you'll find the master uh, over here, you'll find the master bath, but all of our doors are three foot uh, doors to allow for wheelchair access. Uh, later in life, you know, for us, or if we sell the home, uh, it'll be helpful and maybe a, a good selling point. So as you enter the home uh, through the front porch, uh, you're in the foyer, Immediately to your left, you got a dining room, uh, decent size, about uh, 12 by 12, um, actually 12 by 16, I believe, uh, dining room. We really want a, a nice big dining space that we can use for formal uh, meetings and, and get togethers and things like that, you know, with, with at least an eight place dining room set. This will give us ample room in there. And then uh, over here to the right of the foyer, uh, you'll have a nice um, entryway. 
uh, with a built-in right here. This is kind of a, a high bench uh, where you can sit, take your shoes off, and it'll have a built-in behind it where you can hang your things up. Uh, similar to what you would find in a mud room, but this will be kind of used for guests. And then into a nice, uh, well-appointed powder room. Um, moving into the foyer and back out into the living room, uh, you'll find a more open concept. So in the living room, uh, a moderately sized living room that flows into a kitchen. Uh, in here, you'll see kind of some, some false beams across the ceiling. Uh, for these, we're actually using wood from the property. The trees we took down uh, to make room for the house, uh, this will uh, allow us to bring some of the, the nature that we, we live in back into the home. And then into the kitchen here, a uh, very nice kitchen, large uh, uh, tea island is kind of what you're looking at here. So um, a big workspace here and then an island that comes out. This is going to be our primary eating area uh, for the family. It'll seat uh, six to eight people uh, around the island and it'll give you ample views out these windows towards the creek uh, where you can see the sink and, and the appliances. And everybody's kind of got a view here. Uh, and, and then you have the big double doors, the French doors here that Stephanie mentioned and the two-way fireplace that actually goes out onto uh, the back porch here that's going to be screened in. Um, all, uh, you know, moderately sized, nothing too big. We don't want a bunch of space that we don't use. Uh, the master bedroom kind of follows the same theme uh, as you enter in. Uh, the double sinks, the linen closet, uh, a nice shower, no tub. Uh, we don't see uh, a need for it and a nice walk-in closet. We definitely see a need for that. Uh, moving over uh, back through the living room, through the kitchen, you'll find the mud room uh, and the laundry room. Uh, and this will be another access point from the home that'll take you over to the garage. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, so that's really the, the first floor of the house. Uh, and when you go over to the garage, uh, what you'll find is because of the size of the apartment we had to put above it, uh, the garage is oversized for a two car. It's about 32 feet wide, uh, which is nice. And we went with a separated door in here to give us room. So a lot of times you'll get a big double door here, but when you back your cars in, they're so close to each other, you, you can't open your doors. So this space right here will allow us to put cars into the garage uh, and, and still be able to move around in the garage. You'll be able to pass through the garage and then into um, a foyer here that you can access from the outside of the garage or the inside. And this is the staircase that'll take you up to the apartment. Um, This right here is our second floor. So as we go up the staircase from the main house right here, orient you to this, uh, you kind of come up into an open uh, space. This is a loft uh, and this will be a half wall here and then you'll have a nice space here. Windows looking out of the front of the home. This can be an office space or uh, for the kids, you know, they can use it for school and then they have a loft area for themselves. Uh, this space over here, this storage area, this is walk-in climatized storage. Originally, it was going to be a fourth bedroom in the house, um, but we determined that we didn't need it with the, the apartment over the garage. So this will give us nice, ample storage uh, that's climatized, doesn't get too hot. And then moving over, we've got a, a hallway that leads into the boys' bedrooms. So this is bedroom two and three. Uh, right here. These are about 139 square feet. They originally were larger, as Stephanie mentioned, when the upstairs was uh, bigger. Um, but when we adjusted the roof lines, we were able to shrink these down and kind of gain a better look on the outside of the home and really normalize these rooms. They were large. They were, I think, 240 square foot then, which is big for a, a bedroom, especially for uh, a kid. So now they're a little more normal, decent closets, um, and they both share this bathroom right here. And you actually have a little window here in the bathroom. You saw it on the front of the elevation view. It's nice. It looks out. It's got a metal accent roof over the top. Moving over to the apartment, you'll find uh, really kind of the, the spirit of what we were trying to do here. And that's create a space uh, similar to what we experienced with Airbnbs in Europe and kind of in our travels, but just where, you, where a guest can be contained and have their own space and, and not feel like they're on top of us. Uh, so as you come up those stairs we mentioned from the garage and you walk in, you're immediately in the living room. Uh, and that living room uh, is shared, shared space with the kitchen. Uh, and then you from there you can walk into the bathroom big double sinks nice shower We wanted the room in here and you do have plenty of storage here uh, You can enter here into some storage and then as you come into the master You've got large closets and you have an access point here to more storage uh, behind as well uh, The guest bedroom and as you can see and the living room both share access to a large elevated balcony this balcony is um, about 10 foot uh, off the ground uh, to the floor 
uh, and it's going to have really nice views of the creek. And as Stephanie mentioned, um, the way that this is set up here, this balcony right here will not have a line of sight to our uh, back porch right here so that you won't even see them or, 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 or hear them or experience anything that they're doing, hopefully. Uh, that's that's the goal. So this kind of sums up our, our layout of our house. Uh, we're excited to see how it all comes together. Mm -hmm.